A. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 690. NASDAQ's off 192. S&Ps are off 80. Gold contract down $46. Trade 19.15 an ounce. You get silver off a buck and a half. $25.59 an ounce. Light sweet crude down 132. $39.79 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You have the 10-year up nine ticks. 139.22, the 30 year up a full point plus two ticks at 177.02 and King Dollar. King Dollar's up 653 ticks, trading 93.578. Euro's at 117, the yen is at 104 and a half, and the British pound is at 128 to 1 US dollar. Tom O'Brien, what's going on? <laughs> oh man, quite a start to Monday trading, man. Uh, you know, I have to point out, we're, we're within like five points of where we were trading at on June 8th in the S&P. That's, that's remarkable, man. You know, the, the elevator down, folks, is always so fast. And when you get these expansions up, you know, I don't care how long you've been in the market. It seems like it, they never can go back down again. Guess what? <laughs> um, it's fast and it's furious. Now, you know, what we have out here, and the, the bottom line is that you get the NDX 100 and a confirmed ABC structure down. You get the spy and an ABC structure down, and they're big numbers, man. I mean, this is, I mean, I know this looks like we're down a lot, folks, okay? But guess what? Europe is down 3.5% across the board right now. Well, the cat yeah. is down 2.9. Now, that being said, what we've had is that if you're watching Europe at all, the bottom line is that Europe trying to get a little bounce going. The DAX is just getting smoked, you know? So, you know, when we take a look at our markets, you know, yeah, our markets are down 1.6 in the NASDAQ, 1.6 in the S&Ps. But guess what? That's nothing, okay? Um, as our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, would say, the, well, uh, we know the day has only just begun here. So It sure has. The week has just begun, the right? The week has just begun. Gold. Let's go to the gold contract. And this is where, you know, good babies, bad babies, everything gets thrown out, folks. The bottom line, they're going to sell everything. And we're at 1918. Uh, what's game here is the 1908, I think it is. Yeah, it's 1908 is game. Now, it's going to be really intriguing. If it can't make it to 1908, that is going to be about as bullish as you can get um, because it should be able to blow that baby away. Uh, the dollar index, you know, is, has caught a bid. Um, you know, we'll see what it can hold. I mean, right now it's holding really well. It's up 632. Last swing point out here is 93,662. Haven't made it yet, though. Um, so... There's certainly uh, some action, and uh, the bottom line is that what you have is that Apple, now we're down like this and Apple's like flat. Well, it's up a penny, it's up five pennies right now. That says quite a bit, man. So It sure is, and, and, and uh, I mean, you're talking about almost $4 off of the low? Yeah, the low is 103.10, and that's even just on the opening print. Where were we at? Yeah, 103.10, and we're trading at almost 107. You're right, so... That's telling yeah. you inside that NDX, we have a lot of other equities that are basically selling down hard. Actually, let's go look at them. So the biggest move is you get Zoom up 4.8%, AMD's up 2%. Now, that's encouraging, you know, for a few bulls out there. Um, NetEase is up 1.7%. Taken away from it, Marriott's down 6.5%. Illumina's down 6%. Ross Doors is down 4.5%. Bookings.com is down 4.5%. And if we take the whole setup, yeah, you don't have many uh, in the positive there. You know, Tesla's up. Uh, te I believe today's battery day, Tom, with Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. And then how about Nikola, right? Oh. <laughs> That's the end of that stock, man. <laughs> it sure is. You don't have the founder and, and face of the company. Uh, and what is it? I mean, even this morning. What and did they're it still just buying do? it. I, I was just going to say, it just traded positive from, you know, as in it just traded on the open from almost 24 to 28. Right. Um on the day you have the CEO stepping down with pretty harsh allegations, man. Um, I tell you, uh, Elon Musk would not be stepping down if these allegations got made. That's the first thing I thought about, right. you know? Um, 
And so I don't know why you think there's all this value and that everything's false. If if and maybe you don't think everything's false. Maybe you think there's enough true. I don't know. I don't know because I'm not buying that stock today. That's for sure. No, there's no doubt. Yeah. Some of the higher volume equities out here uh, today, folks, is that you get Apple up 41 percent. Nikola is down five and a half dollars. GE's up 46 cents. You get Tesla's up five bucks. We get uh, let's see, Oracle's up a buck. Um, DraftKings down four. That's getting hit. Airlines are getting hit. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you get United down three bucks. We have uh, look at Peloton. Peloton's up three and a half dollars, man. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah. And as one of our tigers is just saying, this is interesting too. So the Denver Gold Show basically started last night. So the Denver Gold Show, folks, is the biggest, one of the biggest. There's, there's another one in Europe. Um, basically, for the, it's for the largest investors inside of the gold market. Um, you know, we'll see whether they can get any juice going. Um, you know, inside this uh, gold market. The bottom line is that. Uh, you know, if we go look at the XAU, the HUI, it's it's going to be it's going to be tough, man. I think all of these are going to basically, actually, the XAU is, XAU is holding up pretty good right now. But I think they're going to come down to the bottom of the consolidation. You know, we're at 146. Well, the bottom of the consolidation is approximately 142. So that has further to go. The Gold Bugs Index. We are at uh, 456. This is holding well, man. I'm surprised. This is good. I'm not. I'm glad, but. Uh, Bottom line, 325 is game. And what we did have on Friday, too, you know, we had a rebalancing inside of the, a lot of the S&P funds. So, you know, there was some real big action coming into the close out here, folks, uh, on Friday, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, and how about, how about that story about the banks, right? Oh. And J.P. Morgan and, and good old Deutsche at the top. Do uh, Deutsche Bank is the king. They've been the king forever, man. <laughs> you know, just... I was surprised to see uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, sure. You know, I actually was. Uh, sure. But, yeah, it's, 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 you know, hey, man, it's, and the amount, they didn't have the amount of money that they made on it, but yeah, it, I'm sure it's quite a bit of money when you start moving that type of some money around. And, oh, uh, for sure. J.P. Morgan was over half trillion dollars. Deutsche Bank was 1.2, maybe 1.3 of the, and and the rest were not that much compared to those two giants. But but. Uh, and that's what they found, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Imagine right. what they didn't find. <laughs> that's what they literally have documents that they've been able to obtain about. Um, right. Yeah. That's the. It's so interesting about this. This is their own documents, you know. So the way sure. this works, this is their own documents that they can't even catch up with. That's that's what's so well. That's what they're claiming. Okay, let's put it this way. So they, what happens, folks, is that if the bank thinks it's a transaction that could be a laundering, they well have to send it to the treasury anyway. Yep. This, these are their own documents sending in, and then they just don't follow up and catch up with it. And in, in in this particular case, they're saying, hey, we know two trillion definitely was dirty money. You know. Yeah, yeah and they're just filing multiple, multiple of those. Um Reports the SARs and, and nothing's happening about them. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild, man. Twenty one hundred of those reports. That's what uh, as I'm skimming through it. Uh, and then, so those filings represent just point zero two percent of the more than twelve thousand reports filed from 2011 to 2017. So there's one statistic that'll blow your mind, maybe. Yeah, slightly. Twelve million of those reports filed, and they're only looking at a couple thousand. Where's the money, honey? Dow, Dow down 670, Nasdaq off 158, S&P's off 75. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right down, uh, down to 722. NASDAQ's up 173. S&Ps are up 81. Hey, Tom, how'd you like that Patriots game? Did you you know what, man? I fell asleep before the end of it. I saw the, the uh, highlights this morning. Quite an end to that game, man. Um, tough final play, of course, man. But the, 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 it doesn't get much better in terms of football than ending like that. It doesn't. You're um, talking about professional football, man. Oh my God, it was. And there were some, there were some great games this weekend, man. I watched the the KC game, um, which went into overtime. There was the the Dallas the game. Dallas that they pulled, game. They I pulled know. Pulled out the game versus Atlanta. Oh, the, those poor Atlanta fans. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, that was. You know, I didn't see that game, but I saw the highlights of it. Of course, oh, right. I was watching it. They had and it that, as that it kick. Was, that kick was something else, man. Is this the the Dallas the KC game kicker? Uh, On okay, the Dallas were, game, that's how they I'm won losing. it. They, they, they did a they did a uh, what an onside kick. What do you, you know? Oh yes, yes, yes. Right, and, that's the one I didn't even. I was gonna say I told you the onside kick, right? Um, and to go over it for people, the Atlanta could have covered it, right? Did you see the yes. actual play? Yeah. So the ball has to go 10 yards. We'll go real quick through this, man. But the ball has to go 10 yards before the the receiving – no, before – yeah, before the kicking team can recover it. Right. And KC did the – and I'm – excuse me. I'm all – Atlanta just could have jumped on the ball at any point. They exactly. let the ball go 10 yards, and uh, Dallas jumps on it, and they win the game, man. How about the KC kicker, though, to go over it? Um, 50, two 58-yard field goals, yeah. man. And at the end of the game in overtime, they had a 53-yarder. He kicked that through, but it was offside. So they push it back five yards. They do that one. They hit the timeout right as he does it. He hits that through 58 yards anyway, and then he hits 58 yards again, man. That is that is a kicker, man. It so, was it was pretty yeah. cool, man. It really yeah, was. It was. And I'm glad Cam Newton. I mean, he 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 came. You know, it was. 
that defensive play at the very end was a good one. I mean, that, that, was, that guy yeah, was, was coming was... across, just filling that hole. I mean, it looked like he was it going was... after him, but he was just filling that hole, man. He knew that hole was there. You know what I mean? It's so. amusing that my friends and I in our group group chat this morning saying, ah, I can't believe that call. They're saying, oh, you have to make that call. If you pass it, everyone says, why'd you get so cute and you pass it? And then you run it. Well, why'd you do that formation? You should have <laughs> given yourself some more options. Uh, just a lot of second guessing. No, it, it is. I didn't just... like the formation. I thought that was it's, like, yeah. 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 And it's listen. It's tough, man. Anytime it's that close, right? That close. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's yeah. it's not like it was the biggest blunder in the world. I think with the no, formation, no, it's no. just it's it a was, tough loss, though. It was a tough um, loss. Tough loss. They and, all should be proud. I can tell you that, which is pretty yeah, cool. They were just amazing yeah. games all over the place, man. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. So, market wise, out here, the bottom line, folks, uh, here. Well, let's do the S and P first, okay? Just to give you an idea, you know. You better eight, do it quick. We're dropping. <laughs> I, well, I'm just, I'm, the, I'm the, looking at the larger ABC. I believe the I'm larger ABC kidding. is 313, I think. Here, well, let me just get What's this. What's crazy, I, just before, we just dipped back down to right below, I think, where we were on June, um, those highs. It was 32, 31, 50, and I got a 32, 31, 25 print on my screen. So we literally got it all back um, three and a half months like that. I know, man. Yeah. So you got an A point on the, SM, on the SPY of 357. Your B point here is 331. So I guess you're 27.67A to B. Your C point is uh, 34306, so minus 34306. Yeah, 315. We're at 322. And when you start lining these up, it's like, okay, so this thing's going to come back to this, uh, well, the same area you're talking about, you know, except at the beginning of June. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, June 3rd, you know. Yeah. And... The way that would you, the way it is going to be very unusual. If let's see, what time is it now? So the European markets are closing in an hour and ten minutes. These European markets, they close at the lows, which look like they're going to be. Guess what, folks? Okay, we're down, but we're not down as much as we're going to be. You know, this will be the this is the building cause for the next acceleration on the way down. I know that sounds bizarre because we're already down, you know, seven hundred eighty-one points. But once these babies start. Um, the momentum just goes the other way. And what will happen, let me see if it's happened. I don't think it's happened yet. You know, when folks wake up tomorrow morning, oh, no, it already happened on the S&P. Yeah, they, they jumped their 50-day moving average. So people that use those moving averages, folks, that's a big deal, man. Sure. It's the first time. So, here, look at this on the SPY. That's the first time we're below the 50-day moving average since, this is all the way back to, what's that? My, uh, April 24th, and the NDX, yeah, we jumped it there, too. On the NDX, you're talking about, let's see, we're, yes, same, April 14th. It's a big number, man. Yeah, and so, I mean, you're dealing over in Europe, of course, um, they're having quite a flare-up over there, the UK especially as well. Um, so you're facing some tighter restrictions coming down the line there. Probably nothing like what it was with the initial lockdown, right? But some curfews um, and further kind of restrictions put in place um, as Europe's got kind of a second wave. And maybe that's why you might see a little bit more of an acceleration, in my opinion, over in Europe, just because of the flares going over there. Whereas over here, hopefully we've calmed down. Not sure how that plays out into, um, you know, the winter and the flu season and all that yeah consistency and then of course uh the passing of ruth bader ginsburg which is just sad when anybody I'm, a great american you know yeah. passes on either side of the aisle folks um but unfortunate when you look at how divisive things have already been obviously adds to that and i think the market really pricing in that there's very little chance of any type of fiscal stimulus uh compromises when you just add you know fuel to a fire of divisiveness already and so I think that getting thrown out the window at the same time that you have Europe kind of trading down pretty starkly. Yeah, it's it's hard to, you know, comprehend sometimes, folks, is that first you can get all good news, right? Markets go, go, go. And then all of a sudden, you know, actually, you know, even we weren't getting all good news. I mean, it's half the mind blower, actually, of the expansion on the way up. Everything wasn't good news, but the market just kept going up anyway. Right. Yeah. I, I and mean, there were some strong numbers for some of the companies especially the tech stocks that's what i keep trying to keep in mind you know in terms yes. of that it's not this false 
um, you know, predicated rally that, you know, even Apple, I keep looking at, I said, really, is Apple, I mean, how far can Apple go, man? Because we were at 103 today, you were at 80 pre-COVID, Apple's accelerated, their numbers last quarter were gigantic, man, yeah. you know, and so, so I, I, you know, and maybe that's the reason why Apple got a little bit of a pop today, but economy-wide, there's a lot of companies still hurting, man, in a big way um, that uh, are not producing those types of numbers like you're talking about. Not even close, man. And somehow they're still not maybe as far down as they might be. I mean, we have the S&P's down almost 90 points now. Right. And yeah. did I send you that, with that article about the... Uh, so commercial real estate, folks, okay? This is just beginning, meaning the amount of defaults that are going to happen out here. Now, that's totally different than, you know the residential real estate in 2008, 9, 10 and all that. Because the differential is, is that these big companies that basically pushed out paper, no one basically, well, the people that bought the paper are going to get hurt. But it's not like someone buying a house and they lose their house. The bottom line, sure. what the large firms are doing, meaning the REITs, they're throwing in the keys right now. They're not even, okay. they, they don't even expect to, default for six or seven months. And the reason they're throwing the keys right now is that they basically, my, my take on it, they want to come back out the other side as quick as they can. They'll go raise more money. Yeah. They're, they're going to know that, hey, listen, 12 months, 18 months from now, I want to be a buyer in commercial real estate. Yeah, you know cutting I mean? your losses. Right. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, 
folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's down 773. Nasdaq's off 222. S&Ps are off 87. You got gold down $67. Silver's off 243. We get some real price destruction uh, happening here. So let's go over to the gold contract again and take a look at this. Could we have a spike low? We we're talking about the 1908. I was looking for it go there. There is a spike low. We'll see how this shakes out at that uh, 1874. <laughs> That's pretty heavy, man. Oh, we're right there, man. Yeah, and I agree. Just big bars kind of all over the place. I pulled up the S&P. Um, just, just a pretty dramatic acceleration right it's, on the open, man. It's a acceleration, and now this is what's hard to wrap your head around, folks, okay? The bottom line is that we're still only down 2%, <laughs> okay? 2.1 right. in the NASDAQ, 2 in the S&P, and 2.8 in the, in the Dow Industrials, okay? So, you know, my take is that you got an ABC structure on the way down, uh, you know, we're going lower, man. I mean, I know it's, we'll see, we'll see how this shakes out, but this is a, a sell-off right across all markets. That's what, that's what we have happening right here. And when you get all markets, the bottom line is that everyone's just trying to get as much cash into your account and figure this thing out later. You know what I mean? And then you got, yeah. of course, you get all the computers going, you know, like you get you and I, Tom, and tigers and tigresses, but guess what? Once something like this happened, the, the computers just accelerated on the way down. You know. And just for some context to where we are, man, I mean, we're, we're flat in the S&Ps, like almost to the tick right now of an opening uh, tick on December 23rd. Let me get the actual one on the few per 3237 was our opening tick on the January 2nd I have on mine. They had a closing um, of 3236 on the day. So we're like right at flat for the year. Um, I don't need to explain to people what's going on right in the world to be flat for the year of 2020. That's on after the returns we had in 2019, um, you oh, know, just wild. keep, keep yeah. that all in mind, man. You go back to January, you're at the highs there from, from February, but you back it up to, you know, January 1st and, and you're right at that level, man, which is, should you, sh you know, as an investor, you should certainly be okay with being flat for 2020 after the returns you had in 20, you know, the last three years with everything going on. So that's, that's something to keep in mind, if not a little bit lower, maybe, right? Oh, I think you'd be a winner. That's what I'm talking it's, about. Exactly. Yeah, I you mean, know, it's like, hey, listen, man, if, you know, we were just at 2174 at the lows. We're 1100 S&P points above that level almost, um, yeah. you know, in the same year. So let's go over to Amazon. So what you had with Amazon here, this is pretty wild because Amazon finished an ABC structure down, wants to get down to the uh, it actually was I think it was it was 2902 was the number on, and it did 2905 on Friday. Now, it's going lower. So Amazon, what you have with Amazon now, folks, it looks to me like it wants to go back to the breakout area of this uh, 2675. That's okay. when we broke topside from it. That would just be a normal deal, basically, you know, for Amazon. I mean, it's not the, not the end of the world. Um, uh, Microsoft, you start getting into 25% haircuts, the word normal is a little tough, right? <laughs> it, that's well, all I stick Okay, let's in. stay right there. This is cool what you just said. And this is where... The problem comes, and this is why you should use percentages, folks. This is where a problem comes when you've gone exponential so quick. Because sure. a normal retracement is like either a 0.382 or 50 of a move. And the sure. move's been so exponential it has. that when you put up when you talk about a 0.382 pullback, it's like, what? That's that that's a because it, it's a point three eight two of the move higher, and the move higher that we're talking about is from March going all the way up to a week and a half ago. And yeah, that's, it's, that's when it that turns does. into a really problematic deal. Uh, yeah, no, and I just threw it up there and you're looking at about 28.12 and that's just at a quick uh, chart there of, of where we are, but we're almost there, man. <laughs> we're almost at a 40% pullback from, from low to high of that entire move. Um, and you know, listen, long-term investor, I don't know if there's a better company than Amazon out there, right? So, so you know, nothing wrong with, with enduring that type of a pullback, but it still things hurts. are about to get dicey, man. We're 43 days, I believe, today from the presidential election. You already have people able to vote in in some states, and, yes. uh, and you know, things about to get even worse with a Supreme Court nominee trying to get pushed through with, you know, less than basically six weeks out there, right. along with everything else, so. Yeah, it's going to be a mess. Yeah. The, um... So right now, the NQs, folks, made it to 10,676. The number to keep your eye on is this uh, 704, because we don't have an ABC structure down, but intraday this is. 
but you can very easily because what's happening is that we're only five minutes into this 10 minute bar. So let me just look at this. It would need 24,000 contracts. And we've done 11. So you need, you need another expansion of volume in order to get it. Doesn't mean you won't, but this, this, is, it, this, is, this number is really important to watch, folks, because if you get another ABC down, man, which the NASDAQ can do very easily, by the way, um, you know, there's, there's, that, that'll be a rough day. That, that, that no doubt will be a rough day out here. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of the area it can accelerate more, but you start getting down to where the S&Ps are down about 3%, man. Um, you know, there's there might be a, the, the just like we're talking about, the moves negative so quickly can be so dramatic when you have a move up so much. When you get a 93-point move in the S&P, we could get a 30- or 40-point pop just as a reprieve before we trade lower or something like that. We're going to see some some big moves here with 93 points in the negative an hour into the trading week. Yes, we are. Um, and I'm just and jumping the VIX. What, VIX we, is, what we haven't go got yet, by the way, to either folks, okay, I don't count the opening tick you know, up or down because they're always big or small. Sure. We haven't got any fear here yet. We don't have any large down ticks. The largest down tick we get so far is 1396, minus 1396. That's, that's saying that right now people are waking up and they really actually weren't paying attention to their portfolios just yet. It'll probably take about lunchtime that people start looking, looking around saying, you know, oh, look, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, what's going on here, you know? So I, I'm looking at the VIX and saying you can make a real good argument that it should be above 30, man. Um, because number one, we have the uncertainties of COVID. All right, number one, sure. that's that's here for right now. It's here for the foreseeable next six, 12, 18 months, right? Something like that. Number two, you have the election that's just inching toward us and whether this is start to factor in. But I mean, just look at the recent highs we had. Even in last month, you made it up to 38, I recall. It's surprising that it's sitting, not. I, yeah. that's, we're sitting at 31 right now, right? Um, you back it up to June and we made it to a high of 45, right? And even when, when the market was going up every single day, man, between July and August, it seemed like you had a VIX that was just kind of comfortable sitting at 25. So, you know, there's always been this feeling in the VIX that these types of moves are around the corner, which is why you saw the volatility being priced at between whether it was 20 as we really traded higher into August or 25 in July. But still at 30, man, there's a lot of room for, for the price of you know premiums on some of those volatility when we start moving three percent in a single hour of trading to start the week off oh there's no doubt man you know right yeah. now as just as you're speaking tom the the uh the dow just uh, basically hit two uh, there it is three percent down okay and we're yeah. only still down 2.4 in the s p that's nothing man and 2.2 in the nasdaq okay so okay. this is uh yeah. And what you want to wrap your head, let me, I'm going to bring the screen over because this is important. To, they really got to look at this, folks. This is Europe. Europe is closing. Uh, yeah. well, it's got another 40 minutes. But see this? Uh, the FTSE's down 3.6. Yep. Cat's down 3.8. DAX is down 4.5. Yeah. 4.5. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 826. You get the NASDAQ off 245. S&Ps are off 90. Let's go inside the Dow and uh, take a look at this baby. So, hey, look at that. You got Walmart uh, in a positive. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I think part of that is the TikTok deal. Oh, right. Um, right. And then part of it is they're releasing their own clothing line as well. So they got a couple fundamental stories that are lifting them a bit. Uh, maybe the only reason they're one of, you know, not one of the only... You only have 30 in the green. Yes. You get United Health uh, putting 92 negative points. Uh, Honeywell, 57. 3M, uh, 53. You got Home Depot, 45. Honeywell, this is quite a, you know, Honeywell is, is just a monster company. But listen to this, man. This, let me just look at this technically for a second. Yeah, you're up at highs, no volume. But listen to this, man. That This is how big these, these companies are, Tom, right? That... Honeywell's going to take a charge today um, from one of their suppliers, one of their buyers, right? Okay. Yeah, they'd be a supplier to this company. They owed them eight hundred million, I think. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's a, it's. Oh, let's see. One second. What is it? Five. I think you just clicked on the company instead of the news story, right? So yeah. No, no. This is it. It's a different okay. type of news. Let's see. Okay. Just... Oh, it, it's even bad, bigger. It's there you one. Go. It's one point one billion in receivables. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's it's that they're a former subsidiary, so they're not even a, a supplier, right? They they were actually oh, yeah. a, See, they a, just, you know what, a subsidiary. That, yeah, so that's a joke. A they, portion of Honeywell is essentially going BK if they go BK. That right? they so just pushed it out. Yeah, yeah, that's and companies do this a lot, folks. If they know that one of their pots oh. are not cool, they will push it out to the public first. Bottom line, then BK it, whether it's two or three years later. Do you know what I mean? They see and, it coming. Do you know what I mean? Right. And just like you're talking about with the real estate deal, man, I mean, they're astute investors. You know, the average homeowner, unfortunately, not a very astute investor. Had they realized what was going on, seen what was going on, maybe you cut those. Um, you know, you could have been underwater way before you realized it that you should have said why am i making payments on this house exactly when i'm when i'm 50 percent underwater and i'm not even going to get back to market prices in forever right um so those are the types of calculations that the companies are making man and they're going bk 
And if you want to see how important it is, folks, what, what Tommy just said. Now, this is, this is, and this had to be so rough for Lennar to do this. I'm going to pull up Lennar. So, Lennar, folks, is one of the biggest home builders in the United States, right? But I want to show you something here. This is amazing. So, what Lennar did, Lennar, in the crisis in 2008 to 10, you know, bottom line, you can see 2005, Lennar is up there at $68, okay? And Lennar was one of the first ones to basically start selling all their land, and they sold it at massive losses, okay? Okay. But guess what? They were selling, they were selling it, okay, that looked like massive losses then. They ended up buying back most of that land, in, okay, at pennies on the dollar compared to what they sold it for. So okay. watch this. So Lennar went to $3.40. But my point is, is that Lennar already topped all-time highs in 2005, okay? Sure. Now, BZH. Now, I'm going to go over just to the opposite, which, which is Biza, okay? And what had happened there is that they held on the whole time, okay? And when you see this, this is like so disgusting, it's unbelievable. The high in Biza, folks, is $410, and they're 11 bucks. My goodness. Isn't that wild, man? Yeah. And I remember one of the main reasons, of course, that we're in Florida, folks. So Lodar is a monster in Florida. And I remember when they sold it, though, saying, oh, my God, what a loss that is. And then sure. I remember when they bought it back. I'm saying yep. to myself, oh, my God. They bought it back. Like in, in, The buyback, too, was like two and a half to three years later. It wasn't like a long period yeah. of time. I even just pulled up KB Homes just for curiosity. And they were all the way up to 85, and they've only made it back to about 37. Exactly. It's the same deal. So yeah. that's taking your loss, man. And they took it oh. early, and then they bought they bought this thing. Could you imagine that you you sold it to, to another big home builder? Because that's what they did. It was other big home builders okay. that were buying it. Because you're talking about okay. acres and acres. And then I'll try, you know, then they ended up buying it back because guess what? You know, they they ate it and they ate it in a huge way, man. So wild. You gotta you gotta always be reevaluating, man. There's no point in in getting caught up in those prior losses. You know, it is what it is. You own a piece of property, man. It's worth forty percent less than than what you paid for it, and you have a mortgage on that. It's very That's hard to be here now sometimes, especially in lost situations, right? Totally. You know, totally. How could that be worth that? It was worth you know so much more money. Basically, last year. Well, this is why companies get in trouble, man. They refuse to recognize those losses on their balance sheets, right? You oh, often yeah. see many times that companies refuse to recognize those losses because you keep them on the balance sheet. You hope they turn around. You're able to use those things as an asset to set off liabilities, um, offset, and and but but inevitably, man, when things are going to get worse, you, you better get that, you know, ship in order. Yeah, there's no doubt. So let's go take a look at some of the, uh, well, let's go back to the XAU, HUI, because they're smoking them all, man. You know, this, so the XAU, yeah, so it's going to go after the bottom of the consolidation. The bottom is consolidation, the XAU, about 142, 140, or 144 right now. The Gold Bugs Index, you're down 13. That bottom there is laying out at like 325 or 329. We do have to spike down to that 318, but... They're coming down to those levels, man. And, you know, we'll see. Uh, let's go to the GDX. A couple of the Tigers want to take a look at the GDX out here. That's coming down there, too. It's down a buck sixty-five, And GDX is game for, like, 38.88. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the lower end of this. And that's also the breakout area. So I expect we'll get there because I'm not expecting any miracles uh, in the S&P or the NASDAQ uh, as we go through this day out here today, you know? Yeah. And it's, you know, you're kicking off on Monday. So that's really going to be intriguing just uh, basically for the next couple days. And in the, so, okay, so we had, let me do the ABC structure down on the queues. We had, so it's 315 on the, um, the spy. The queues we're dealing with. Your A point up here. Come on, let's do this quick, Tom. About three hundred three fifty. Yeah, at th three hundred three fifty. Here, can you do the numbers for me? Yeah, three hundred three fifty. The B. And point, where's your lows? The B September eleventh. Two sixty six ninety. Okay, the so C that's about forty dollars. Okay. Uh, not really, I guess, but you know, thirty, thirty seven dollars. The C point is two eighty forty six. Yeah, so you're talking yes. two forty, so man, right? Two forty, two forty five. <laughs> And we're at 260. Oh, listen, yeah. And heavy. It is. Yeah. It is heavy stuff, man. Um, 
And that, that's with, you know, some, I was just going to say that's with some of the stocks like they're mentioning the Dan. I mean, Zoom up more than 4% today to 457, man. Um, Netflix shares are up today. Well, tenth of a percent, but in the green. Um, and Roku popping higher as well. Roku, look at that, man. They made a deal with NBC. 16% they're up today, Roku, wow. for uh, basically all-time highs. Unreal. Yeah. They just goes to show, make it easy to flip around the channels, folks, and oh. best, I guess what? <laughs> Listen, I've told this story. I mean, I, I have them in my house right now. We got four of them, and I told you, we use them as cable boxes through Spectrum, folks. Uh. You don't want to pay for a cable box. You just use a Roku. You download the Spectrum app. It's not quite as good as it should be to really, to, you know what I mean? It's not as interactive as a cable experience. But guess what, man? When you're paying for a bunch of cable boxes in your house, it's awesome to get rid of all that. Totally, man. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow's down at 830. Nasdaq's off 244. S&P's off 91. We'll come right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down at 804. Nasdaq's off 224. S&Ps are off uh, 86. Let's go take a look at Constellation Brands. A couple of Tigers want to look at that, Tom. Yeah. And you know, bottom line, you know, you're still in a consolidation. You know, I mean, this yeah. is the type of deal you can see you're down. But guess what, man? This has been consolidating up at these levels for a long period of time. 
Sure. Um, and I mean, even I have a couple uptrend channels in there in terms of where you could look at. Uh, I mean, it's been an uptrend in terms of just like you're talking about. I mean, we just traded for some context, right? On August 7th, so you're talking about six weeks ago, you were trading at 170 and you traded all the way up to almost 200. Um, and so we're pulling back to 183. Right. Kind of, as you said, a consolidation. Um, and you know, that's. I was just going to say, fundamentally, man, I really like that stock because it's a great fundamental stock. They got a great portfolio of booze, which is not going anywhere. <laughs> totally. And you're able to add some rice exposure to Canopy because the problem with Canopy, man, I like trading Canopy. Um, super highly volatile to be in, and you know, yeah. you want to throw a tiny portion of it in your in your 401k or something. That's great. I really like those long-term stocks that you know are going to be around. Right. Um, that you don't have to worry about. They're going to disappear. And that's someday. the perfect exposure, man. That, that's where exactly. it's at. You, uh, my take is you don't you don't want to. I mean, if you want to, you can trade a standalone you know pot company. But guess what, man? The liquor companies or the surrogate companies are going to own the pot companies. I uh, agree, you know, especially on a, on when you see them basis. putting billions of dollars already into it, which yeah. this constellation yeah. has. You know, yeah, no, no doubt. Stay right there, folks. Uh, we got uh, Think or Swim coming up next, uh, you, and you're trading the option market, great market, folks. Bottom line, you want to know what your defined risk is. And I'm MS Basil Chapman, Ooh. Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I will be back this afternoon. And keep in mind, you know, we're all bulls and bears, but keep in mind, you get a large ABC structure down in these indices, folks, okay? That's the larger picture right now. Thanks, Val. Thanks, man. Ooh. Look at them, folks. Wow.